What's going on, Algebra 2 students? Let's get this party started, shall we? Alright, anyway, I don't know what that was all about. We're going to cover up some pretty quick stuff. We're going to do some interesting stuff. I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited, too. Let's jump into it, shall we? Alright, so what we want to do is we want to solve... We're solving equations, and I know you guys are thinking, wait a second, didn't I do this in, like, Algebra 1? And the answer is yes. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of bring equations, solving equations, and how they relate to the graphs that we've been talking about. So let's take a look at this one pretty quickly. x squared minus 1 equals 3. Wait a second. Is that backwards? Is the video camera backwards? Did Mr. Daldy screw something up? Give me a second. Hold on. All right. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. How do we, how do we, how do you like them? Them apples. We good now? Alright, awesome. X squared minus 3, X squared minus 1 equals 3. Well, what we can do is we can say, alright, well, this is X squared equals 4, because I can just add 1 to both sides, everyone agree? And then I can just take the square root of both sides and I have X equals 2. Are we cool? Yes? Say yes, come on, I need you quick responses. Yes, no, I don't know. Yes, awesome. Awesome, great, great, great. I tricked all of you. Just think about it, think about it. Let's look, let's look at this problem real quick. Let me just take this part right here. X squared equals four. I'm gonna write that as X squared minus four equals zero. All right? Isn't that the graph of a parabola? There we go, Cameron's got the idea. But look at this, isn't this the graph of a parabola? Just drop down 4, that's what the minus 4 does, right? So if I were to draw a parabola, and I were to take my regular parabola, there we go, I were to erase that parabola, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down 4. And actually it's not unmuted, 7th graders are really loud. Let me go yell at them real quick. Dude. Dude. You guys are oh, well. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Alright. So check it out. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me now? Is it better? Is the audio better? Awesome. Alright. Look at this. You take this parabola and we're gonna take this thing and and bring it down four units. So if I bring it down four units, it will come down like this, one, two, three, four, like that. And do you see how where it crosses is not only at positive two, but at negative two as well? Because what we're doing is we're setting this equal to zero and we're saying, when does this x squared minus four, I guess I could put a y over there, but really what we're saying is when does that equal to zero? Well right here, and as you can see from the graph, obviously, it's both positive and negative too, which should remind you to never forget that when you put the square root of both sides, you need to throw in that plus or minus in there, or else you're going to end up with only one of the two answers that you should end up with. Are we cool with that? So what I'm showing you here is I'm showing you guys how to solve this thing mathematically. But there's a relation that we can go back to solving this thing graphically. Here, let me show you another warm-up problem. Let's try this one. Ready? x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 2. All right. Let's try this puppy on for size. Uh, x squared minus 3x minus 4. We cool? All right, let me see. What can I do? How can I make this interesting? I'm going to... Um, yeah, I think that the best thing to do would probably just be to factor it. So I got an x, I got an x, and I want to make it so that these two numbers over here multiply out to be negative 4, so I know one's positive, one's negative, and I want to make it equal to negative 3, so I'm going to put the negative 4 over here and 
positive one over here because four times negative four or negative four times one is negative four, which we're good here. But if I add those, you get negative three. This is algebra one stuff. You guys should be already cool with it. Uh, equals zero, and then you so you have x either equals negative one or x equals positive four. And if I were to graph that, I'll show you that the graph actually looks like negative one, positive four, something like that. Are we happy? No, no, wait, wait, I screwed up, I screwed up. It would look something like that. Because, because, remember you look at that number in front of the x squared term and if it's a positive number, then it's a happy face parabola. If it's a negative number, then it's a sad face parabola. That's how I would know that it would look something like that. So can I tell you the exact vertex? Well, I would have to calculate that out. So I can make this graph much more prettier, but for the most part, we're good. Does that make sense, Lena? Are we cool? All right. Now, I'll tell you what. I made a mistake. I don't think I covered this in my class. Um... I don't think I covered these pages in my class, but I made them due. Like one was this, this was due yesterday. And so Mr. Dalday, what a jerk, um, he didn't do this. So I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll do a lot of it for you. And hopefully we'll, we'll go through this pretty quickly. Um, let's, let's do this one. Based on the graph below, all right, there is no way to submit function six. I thought I fixed function six. I might have fixed it just yesterday. But check it out again, the drop boxes, it should work. All right, based on the graph below, find x such that f of x equals zero. All you're asking, because this right here, this axis right here, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, it's also the f of x-axis. It's the, because because y is a function of x. Now, if we look at this graph, um, can you guys tell me what that graph kind of reminds you of? What, what, what shape this graph? This isn't a parabola. It's a centipede. A centipede, okay, fine, it starts with a C. It's called a cubic function. I'll give you a hint as to why it's called a cubic function. Actually, you know what? Let's go through it and see if you guys can figure it out. This is called a cubic function. It looks something like, I don't know, it will probably look something like 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 7x plus 8 equals 0. Not equals 0, but equals y. Now, I just made up these numbers, 3, 4, negative 7, 8, but I can tell you for sure that it's probably going to have an x cubed, an x squared, an x term, and an 8 in there. Or not an 8, but a number out in front, out, out of there. Those numbers could change depending on how this thing looks, but for the most part, you're good. Now, this describes y as a function of x, but if I want to figure out when exactly it equals zero, that's actually really easy. All you got to do is say, what it's asking you for is what are the x-intercepts? Well, you can read it right off the graph. Boom, boom, and boom. If you look at this graph over here, that's negative 2, positive 1, and 3. So your answer would be negative 2, comma, positive 1, comma, 3. Are we good? Now, just so that you guys can kind of get an understanding of how this stuff works, and I'm actually going to detour a little bit real quickly, I'll show you. This right here is called a cubic function. It looks like this. Got it? This right here is called a quartic function, or a to the fourth power function. Uh, this right here is called a, I don't know, a to the fifth power. So this is third power, uh, three RD power. This is fourth power. This is fifth power. And how would you solve a cubic function? Uh, well, you can only really solve special cubic functions, and we might get there later, but I don't think we're going to get there now. Uh, Right now, we're really focusing on quadratic functions. All right, 
But here's the thing I want you to notice. Oh, and then here. You guys know this one. This is second power, which is a straight-up problem. How many, count the number of bounces. What I mean by a bounce is it comes down and then bounce goes back up. For the, that's for the second function. There's one bounce. For the third power function, there's, it goes up, bounce, goes down, bounce, so there's two bounces. By the way, you can always put a negative in front of it and it will look like this. It will just be the opposite like that. But, you know. Someone's asking me a question, I will answer it. Mr. Dalde, are we going to go what? Over the rest of function six, IDK, if it's just me, but I had a hard time with seven, eight. Um, I don't know if I'll have time, hopefully I will. I'm gonna try to wrap this uh, video up in about half an hour, and then maybe I'll spend maybe 10 minutes doing some tutoring, um, if I have the time. I want you to notice this though. The third power function has two bounces. The fourth power function has how many bounces? Count them. Say it for me. One, two, three. There we go. The fifth power has five bounces. One, two, three, four. Or the, the fifth power has four bounces. So you can actually look at a graph and tell what power the x has just by counting how many times it bumps. Now, now be careful with this, because these are all kind of radically shaped looking things. If you plug into your calculator or Desmos or whatever you want to graph, y equals x to the fourth power, what you'll get is actually this graph. What does that look like? This looks like a parabola to me. See right there? Because it actually is bumping four times or three times. You just can't see it. If you start adding weird numbers to this, like y equals x to the fourth power plus x cubed plus, I don't know, 6x squared minus 2, you're going to get some graph that actually does this. You'll be able to mess with the shape of it. All right, we good? So what I said was kind of right, kind of wrong. But anyway, uh, what I mean by that is you can't look at a graph and just say, oh, the, because of the number of bumps it has, I can definitely tell that it's a fifth, you know, up to the fifth power or whatever. Sometimes it's a little bit more subtle than that. But if I see something like this, I can say it is at least to the fifth power because you need x to the fifth power in order to get these bumps. Does that make sense to you? That was kind of a detour from math, but hopefully I explained that. All right, let's do this next one then. I'm going to pause the video.